Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really good to be here with everybody from the Farm Bureau, and I want to thank Phil Nelson. Uh, I think all of us in Illinois understand that our agriculture is second to none in the whole world, and it's important that we do export as far as we can and as much as we can to the entire world. And so part of the job of a governor is to be an exporter in chief, to make sure that our goods reach uh, all the markets we can uh, obtain access to. And we're very happy that we have some new uh, free trade agreements, one with Korea, one with Colombia, one with Panama. Uh, we want to definitely in the coming year uh, work on those as well as all the other opportunities for expanded trade. And I do see that as an important mission of my office and I really want to thank the Farm Bureau. Every time we call, we uh, get together, work together. We're looking to go forward in Mexico very shortly, a very important trading partner of ours. Canada is our number one trading partner, Mexico number two, China number three, Australia number four, and Brazil number five. And it really is important that your community in particular uh, tell our federal officials and our state officials how important it is to have strong export from our state of Illinois. We've been able to increase our exports uh, last year, it was a 28% increase. It's another increase this year. We've got to keep it going. And we also understand that getting goods to market is imperative. And that's why when Phil called about the challenges we have with the Mississippi River navigation, this is a very serious challenge indeed. We've asked the Army Corps of Engineers to put more water from the Missouri River into the Mississippi River, the big river, the one that really connects our entire nation to uh, ports like New Orleans where we can export our goods to the world. This is a crisis of the moment and I look forward to working with everyone here to get a good solution. We need not only to get more water in the Mississippi, we have to deal with some of the dredging issues and blasting out if necessary in order to make sure that we have the navigation necessary to connect to the world. And that also goes for our locks and dams. We all know how important that is on the uh, Mississippi River, the Illinois River, to make sure that we have 21st century navigation for our crops. And I think also related to that is we always have to have uh, a backup plan. And in this current emergency, I look forward to working with everyone here that if we have to use alternative means of transportation, rail, truck, you name it, uh, we've got to make sure that we clear the path for that opportunity. And uh, for, I really feel it's necessary that we come together at this time and work together for the common good. We did that last summer. I was in Mount Vernon in Jefferson County uh, with Phil and members of the Farm Bureau. We were dealing with the ravages of the drought that we suffered this past year. It was very, very serious. Affected many, many of our farms all across Illinois, indeed the Midwest. Uh, it's important that we help each other in those times of crisis. Uh, we, we believe in insurance, and uh, we also believe in having our government agencies, our Illinois Finance Authority, our Illinois Department of Agriculture, and all of our departments there when you need them. And so we really still want to work and go forward as we help people recover from a very devastating drought. About 40% of the Illinois economy comes from agriculture and agribusiness. So we certainly honor our agribusinesses, whether it's ADM or uh, Tate and Lyle, or John Deere or anyone else, all of those men and women who work in those businesses understand that agriculture is the foundation in our state of Illinois. And that's why every summer we celebrate our agriculture at the Illinois State Fair. We had the biggest attendance in recent memory this year at the fair and I think it was very meaningful that folks who came from suburban and urban areas understood that the drought was causing great distress in our rural communities across Illinois. I was quite impressed by how uh, everyday people came and understood that we had to come together in Illinois and work for the common good. And as governor of Illinois, we have serious challenges. We know what those economic challenges are. When I became governor, we had serious, serious ethics challenges. We have two governors, former governors, in jail right now at the same time. It's my job to clean that up, and it's uh, important to do that 
on behalf of the people of Illinois who are good and true, honest men and women who want their government to be as honest as they are. So we've worked very carefully on those issues of ethics and integrity, also getting our economy back on track. We are not there yet, but I think all across Illinois, uh, we've seen a resurgence in our manufacturing, in our export, in our agriculture. We've got to make sure our Illinois economy is going at full tilt. We also understand the importance of our state budget getting under control. I won't get under control until we deal with this very serious and complicated and challenging issue of pension reform. I believe in pensions for public employees, for our teachers, uh, decent pensions for their hard work. When they retire, they are entitled to a decent retirement. At the same time, we have a system in Illinois that's uh, out of kilter. $96 billion uh, in liability is owed. Uh, matter of fact, every day that we don't act on pension reform, another $17 million is added to that liability. So it's no fun having to talk about it, but we have to deal with it. There have been 70 years that this uh, problem of pension reform has been created, over 70 years, seven decades. That's 12 governors, 13 speakers of the House, 12 presidents of the Senate have been in and out without a solution. So we must deal with this. And I think folks who work in agriculture understand the importance of meeting difficult and hard challenges, but necessary in order to make sure we have a better state. So we're going to work on that issue. I'm optimistic in early January that we can come up with a, a reform that can meet everyone's uh, approval, at least to get a majority approval. I think it's important that we do that together. And I do want to thank the Farm Bureau for uh, highlighting the importance of this issue. It won't go away. It's squeezing out our investment in our education. It's so important that we educate all our students in Illinois from early childhood to K to 12, then on to community colleges. I used to teach community college at night. We have 48 great community colleges in Illinois. We must invest in our students uh, with the scholarship program we have called the Monetary Assistance Program. We have great four-year universities, the University of Illinois. Uh, 150 years ago, uh, Abraham Lincoln, from our state, president of the United States in 1862, signed the Murill Act. That was a law that established land-grant universities across our country. It was during the Civil War. Lincoln knew, understood how important education, education would be to the future of America. So the University of Illinois came out of that law. It was founded in 1867. It has a great school of agriculture and understands how important it is to work with men and women all across Illinois who are in agriculture and helping with research. And it was very meaningful when Rich Gebert and I were in China. We have so many graduates of the University of Illinois in that country. 50,000 graduates of U of I are in China. They understand how important uh, it is to do research and to have great universities. But we cannot have that if more and more of our money is being put into pensions for former government employees than it is to education for the students of today. Unfortunately, that's where we're headed very shortly. And that also is true with our public safety. We've got to have enough money to make sure we have our roads safe and everything uh, done right. Uh, I was just at a wake on Friday night of a young man, 32 years old, a state policeman who gave his life for all of us. Uh, he lost his life in the highway this past week, Kyle Dederich. So I think it's important that we understand that the key things that everyone in Illinois, no matter where you live, in the rural communities of our state, in the suburbs or in the city of Chicago here, we're all in this together when it comes to good schools, decent health care, outstanding public safety, and taking care of our veterans, those who have uh, volunteered to defend our democracy, for our right to plow and to grow and to harvest. It's very, very important that we take good care of those who go forward and protect our democracy. So I'm really honored to be here at this great gathering of the Farm Bureau. I've been here before. I intend to be here every day. Uh, I'm governor, I'll be with you. I remember talking to uh, uh, President Nelson right when I became lieutenant governor. We were talking about wind power and uh, the opportunities there. And I think renewable energy is an opportunity if we do it right. We always have to make sure we do it the proper way with concern for everyone. But uh, there's another uh, opportunity to get re rents in the rural communities of our state. 
to bring more income, more opportunity. I also believe in broadband deployment, making sure that the access to high-speed internet is not just for folks who are in affluent areas or in uh, very highly uh, urbanized areas. It's everybody in and nobody left out when it comes to high-speed internet. Very, very important for our rural schools in particular that they can connect, our rural institutions, uh, our hospitals, making sure that uh, we have high-speed internet. And as governor of Illinois, we've made a tremendous investment in our infrastructure. We understand that our roads are indispensable at getting goods to market. We've fixed up and repaired and built 7,700 new uh, miles of roads since I've been governor. We've uh, repaired 1,040 bridges all across Illinois. Uh, we've also invested in a rail system. We have to make sure we have 21st century rail to get goods to market. We understand the importance of clean water. This should, right now we have a $1 billion clean water initiative all across Illinois to invest in our drinking water to make sure that it's safe and pure. We un also understand the importance of broadband fiber. We've laid 4,100 miles of broadband all across Illinois, particularly in r rural areas, to make sure everybody's connected. These are the things we have to do together. Uh, Illinois, in my opinion, is a state of 13 million people. We're a family. We understand, as uh, all of us do, that when families uh, come together and work together, that's when they're at their best. Uh, it's great to be here. I look forward to working with everyone here on important and tough issues in the coming uh, few um, weeks. We have until January 9th with this legislative session. I uh, get uh, many opportunities to visit with your leaders and your members. Uh, I look forward to going to the Farm Progress Show. I think it's coming up this year in Decatur, uh, end of August. I uh, hope everyone can come to the State Fair, and there we'll make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you very much. <clears throat>